one way my practice has changed is talking a lot more with family members about how, you know, the behavioral challenges they're seeing at home and how what we worked on at school could translate to home. Um, and then also kind of the incentives that we can provide to encourage that. I was talking on the phone with this caregiver before I had to schedule positive break with um, the student. And she described some of the behaviors that she had been seeing. And then, you know, it's just like listening to her and then um, kind of reminding her of our plan at school and then asking her what parts of that she'd like to see at home. And kind of what we, we landed on was um, finding another time of the week that I could call and play this online game with him if he demonstrated these like two or three behaviors. Um, and I think that's an adjustment of kind of what we were doing at school because similarly he had a incentive at the end of the week where he got to go on a screen. Um, but the behaviors were, you know, school behaviors like being respectful to teachers or staying in class. Um, and then at home now, because his behaviors had been higher, it was a lot more safety related. Um, but yeah, that kind of the desire for an incentive and also the criteria for when he will get the incentive emerged from um, the caregiver and just having that check in before providing the service to her child. I guess one thing that has been interesting for me uh, is to see how certain kids are more willing to open up when there's more kind of physical distance between you. <laughs> like this, in particular, there's one student who is really resistant to talking for even like more than like three to five minutes with staff, but he's been one of the kids who's actually been reaching out outside of our check-in times, like calling me on Google Hangout or Zoom. And it's interesting both to see like kids like that actually really do want your attention. They just don't want to show it, <laughs> which we, we know, but it's so apparent when you have like the missed Zoom notification call. Um, and then also maybe like that doing like a chat or like a phone call weirdly gives them the amount of distance so that they feel they can be a little more vulnerable than they can face to face. And it made me, makes me think about kind of the exercises we do when, you know, we practice like looking in each other's eyes and then walking side by side. And then in some ways this is like the ultimate distance where they can really feel comfortable to talk. Mm -hmm.